So far this hour, we have been talking about what it means, or what it should mean, to be a water city. But Milwaukee is also famous for something else. Beer. It's not water, but close. 95% water. And in the hands of Milwaukee's brewers, it is so much more. Charles Monroe Kane sat down with Ben Barbara, Milwaukee's official beer historian, yes, that is his actual title, for a trip down memory lane. If you got the time. So while we're sitting here chatting, what's your favorite beer? We've got the beer, <laughs> beer. Pabst Blue Ribbon. <laughs> beer initially was by neighborhood. In the first 20 years of brewing beer in Milwaukee, there were 25 to 30 breweries most of them serving the few blocks around where that brewery was located. But even by the 1850s, some of these breweries were starting to shift their beer. Time now for O.M., the man from old Milwaukee and his faithful dog, Margaret. What really gave Milwaukee a competitive advantage over other German American brewing cities like Cincinnati and St. Louis was the fact that it's colder here. Great hops and barley malt. Look, Margaret, that gold mine has caved in. You absolutely needed ice, especially for the beer that Milwaukee's most famous for, which is lager beer. Let's dig them out. <clears throat> lager beer needs to be stored at cold temperatures for it to age properly. Gives you a new perspective on Wisconsin winter. <laughs> But there's another city on Lake Michigan that has a big river that's way bigger. Chicago, how come Chicago's not the brew city? Milwaukee had a couple of things going for it. Easy access to grain and hops, a very large German immigrant population, and most importantly, Milwaukee did not have a catastrophic fire. In 1871, Chicago town burned down. Throats were parched and burned and dry, no drinking water around. Milwaukee took advantage of Chicago's catastrophic fire and immediately started shipping beer into the city. The Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company, Milwaukee and other cities. By the mid-1850s, some of the shipping brewers were shipping as many as a thousand barrels. And it was really with the advent of the refrigerated rail car that Milwaukee was able to ship nationwide. Say, so, yeah, I'd like you to meet a couple friends of mine here. This right here is Mr. Uh, no Label. But there were some very precocious breweries here. And over here, of course, is Pabst Blue Ribbon. Miller, Pabst. What do you have? Pabst Blue Ribbon. Pabst Blue Ribbon beer. Blatz and Schlitz, they had easy access to the river. They could transport the beer that way. Then they also had the beer line, the rail line that came through along the river. Oh, excuse me, you said it was called the beer line? It's getting close to the end of the line. You can almost taste what's coming. It became known as the beer line because it ran north through the city and <laughs> went by so many of the breweries. I could see the guys at lunch break going, woo hoo, here comes the beer line. <laughs> because the next stop is called Miller Time. There's this lure that during that time, that beer in Milwaukee was safer to drink than water in Milwaukee. Is that true? Natural water has all kinds of bugs and bacteria and things in it, and the brewing process cooked the worst of that out. Now, you can make an argument that drinking alcohol kind of deletes any benefit. We're not going to um, make that but, argument right now. Right. <laughs> this is Big Al Hurt saying that you need only two things when you go fishing. Lots of Miller High Life and a little bit of luck. The beer was less alcoholic than a lot of the beer that we have today. It was not uncommon for people to drink 30, 40, 50 glasses of beer a day. Hey, look at that, man. Big Dad. That deserves a Miller. This beer was at, you know, 3%, 4%. Wow. You know, the whistle would blow, and it was time to have your beer instead of your coffee or whatever it would be. You work in the sky with nothing to hold on to but the wind and a cold steel beam. And it's a very long day until a whistle blows telling you it's Miller time. You know, we have the Milwaukee Brewers, we have Miller Park, the Paps Theater that we're in. Is Milwaukee still the Bruce City? Yes. One, two, three, four. If you go around the country and you ask people about Milwaukee, one of the first things, if not the first thing they're going to mention is beer. We're going to do Maybe Milwaukee was a little late to the game, but now we've got all these craft breweries that are taking off, too. We're kind of seeing a return in a lot of ways to 30, 35 small neighborhood breweries recreating that Bruce City reputation. 
kind of wonder what Laverne and Shirley would think about it. I think we'd blow their minds. 